Okay, so after our experiment, now we're going to look at the formal definition of a radical rational function. A rational function f is a function of the form of f of x equals p of x over q of x. I have seen n of x over d of x, n standing for numerator, d standing for denominator. But what's important to understand is that these two function notations are polynomial functions. Now, we're going to have x's in the top and x's on the bottom. What's most important is your denominator function cannot be equal to zero because that's where you are undefined. And we just discovered that's where your vertical asymptotes are going to be at. And so if your q of x is equal to zero, then we know that the vertical asymptote and it's a discontinuous graph right there. There's a break. So all that work that we noticed about our points when we were plugging them into one over x, that's called a reciprocal function. If and I will go back and we'll look at some points and you'll see how quick and easy it is to plot the points because whatever x you choose, your y coordinate will be the reciprocal of whatever x you're putting in. So if we take and now find all the basic characteristics of the recipro reciprocal function. So as I said, these are the x's you want to put in. This y is going to be the reciprocal of whatever you put in. So if I start with negative 2, then the reciprocal of that is negative one half. And again, it doesn't matter where you put the negative. The reciprocal of negative one is negative one over one. Well, that's negative one. The reciprocal of negative one half is negative two over one. But if you put zero in for x, now that's undefined. We saw that earlier. So that's technically where our vertical asymptote is going to be. The reciprocal of one over two is two. The reciprocal of one is one. The reciprocal of two is one half. So we are going to go ahead and plot those points. So I'm going to take care of the negatives here. So at negative 2 and a negative 1 half, negative 1 and a negative 1, negative 1 half and a negative 2. Put in my vertical asymptote because we can't touch that y-axis. Then we need to put in 1 half and the 2, 1 and 1, and 2 and a half. And then we'll draw in our graph. And then you realize, okay, we can find our domain. It's going to be all x's except for 0. You can put that in interval notation, or you can use set builder notation. And I'm perfectly happy on your test that you take for me is you can put in just the x cannot equal 0. That is called an implied domain. You're implying that the domain is all real numbers except for this value. And you can do the same thing for the range. As you see with our range here, our y's, we're never going to touch the x-axis. So again, same answer as the domain for the range. Or set builder notation, I'll set of all y, such that y does not equal 0. Or you can just put in y does not equal 0. So based on our function, it's decreasing on this interval. And it's decreasing on this interval. So we'll say negative infinity to 0, open intervals. Open interval 0 to infinity. As we said earlier, it's going to be discontinuous at x equals 0. The y-axis we said is our, hor is our vertical asymptote, and our x-axis is now our horizontal asymptote. And this is an odd function which has symmetry with respect to the origin. Now, what does that mean? That means you have to do something to this graph to make it look the same. So normally when we were looking at a parabola, it was a U-shaped curve, and we said we can flip it over the y-axis, and it looks exactly the same. It's a mirror image. Well, to be symmetrical to the origin, put your pencil on your paper at the origin, turn this paper 180 degrees upside down, and the graph looks exactly the same. So what we want to do is go back to those same transformation rules that we saw back in our trigonometry days with graphing sines and cosines, tangents. And if you had a great college algebra teacher the previous semester and they talked about transformations of your graphs, even better. But here's going to be a little quick review, and we kind of talked about that earlier when we were talking about the y equals a times the binomial x minus h, close the parentheses to the n power plus k. We said that was like your standard form of the parabola, but we were going to apply it to all of our polynomial functions. 
we're going to do the same thing with our rational function. So we're going to graph this without using a calculator by identifying translations. Sketch it, uh, stretches, shrinking, reflections, shifting left, right, and then we'll find the domain and range and asymptotes. So this is technically negative 2 times 1 over x. So it's this function right here. We just have to apply the negative, which means you have to flip it over the x-axis, and the multiplication of 2 is going to be a vertical stretch. So if this is this basic graph, draw in your vertical and horizontal asymptote, and let's plot those six starting points right there. I will always use those points. There they are. I'm graphing them as open circles because that's not where they're finally going to end up. Their final destination will be a closed point. So to take care of the negative, that's a flip over the x-axis. It is technically outside the function. So we're going to take this point, flip it to there, flip this, flip that. We'll flip these all over. Now, what we're also going to do is, instead of doing two different transformations at the same time, because it's a multiplication of a negative 1 and the multiplication of a 2, we're going to combine that together and say, let's just multiply all your y-coordinates by a negative 2. That will do the flip and the stretch at the same time. So here, this open circle has a y-coordinate of a negative 1 half, and negative 1 half times a negative 2 is a positive 1. This y-coordinate is negative 1 times negative 2 is going to slide it and push it up here to 2. This y-coordinate is negative 2 times negative 2 is now positive 4. So at negative 1 half, I'm now going to be at 4. And we'll do the same thing over here. Here my y-coordinate is 2 times a negative 2 puts me at negative 4. y-coordinate 1 multiplied by negative 2, now it's that negative 2. Neg uh, positive 1 half times a negative 2 makes that a negative 1. Draw in our curves, and there's our graph. So when you're multiplying, that's a great shortcut to take care of two transformation rules all in one step. Now my next graph here, we have technically three transformations going on. And in this case, now we have our inside inside the function x plus 1. It's like inside the parentheses. And we said, solve that for x by setting it equal to 0. x equals a negative 1, which means we're moving everything to the left 1, including the vertical asymptote lines. So again, if I draw in my x and y's axis as the vertical and horizontal asymptote lines, start with my six points plug them in. I want to do this shifting left and right first. Anything inside the parentheses is done first. It's basically your PEMDAS rules. Or inside parentheses, we simplify inside there first. We move everything left and right first before we do any movement up and down. So vertical asymptote and my six points are all going to slide to the left one square. Next, we got the multiplication of 3 has to be done before the minus 4. Now, these are outside the function. So again, these will change the y-coordinates. So the 3, multiply all the y-coordinates by 3, because that's technically 1 over my x, but I multiplied 3 to the top. All right, so here I have a negative 1 half times 3 is negative 3 halves. Negative 1 for a y-coordinate multiplied by 3 is now negative 3. Negative 2 times 3 is now negative 6. Positive 2 for my y-coordinate times 3 is now 6. 1 for my y-coordinate times 3 is now 3. A half times 3 is 3 halves. There's my new location. Again, notice none of the x's changed. Everything just moved up or down. And then the minus 4, the last thing here to do is now we've got to shift everybody down 4, including the y equals 0 horizontal asymptote. All right, so here we go. Cross my fingers. Let's see if I can get everything to move all down 4 squares. And there's our graph. Now, 
I agree wholeheartedly that that can be a little bit tough because there's so many transformations going on. What I would like to do is figure out a way is how can I kind of do what I did over here, just do some operations, locate my points and draw my graph. Well, here's what we can do. Let me go grab my iPad. And on my iPad, as I wrote down those six circle points. So the important thing here first to do is to always understand we said we're going left one and down four. Okay, so the first thing I would do is find my shifts left and right, up and down, and then take my vertical asymptote, shift it to the left one, take your x-axis, which is your horizontal asymptote, go down four squares, and draw it in. So theoretically, I'm thinking of my asymptotes as the x and y axis just being moved to a new location. Now, what I want is the final points to finally plot, and I know I have to have one part of the curve in this upper right-hand corner of my asymptote lines and one down here. So here's what we're going to do. So we said we had to subtract or move to the left one. That is subtracting one from every x-coordinate. So I write that underneath all six of my points. And then the next thing we did is we said, okay, now we got to multiply 3 to all of my y-coordinates. So I kind of go down a little bit here. If this was notebook paper, let's say this is the first notebook line right here. Then this is an empty line, and this is an empty line, and we put all that information in there. Every y-coordinate. And then the last thing we did was right here. Everybody goes down 4. That's subtracting 4 from every y-coordinate. So instead of doing this on the graph, we can just crunch numbers and show the changing of our points and then go plot them. All right, so here we go. Let's, oh, come on, pen. All right, let's do the number crunching. First point right here, negative 2. Minus 1, negative 3. Negative 1 half times 3. Okay, I might have to do this off to the side. That's negative 3 halves. I want to subtract a 4, but I need a common denominator. That would be like minus 8 halves. Okay, denominators are the same. Negative 3 minus 8 is a negative 11 halves. Let's go to our next point. Hopefully we're, oh good, no fractions. Negative 1 minus 1, negative 2. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3, minus 4, negative 7. Oh, fraction, here we go again. Okay, so negative 1 half minus 1, that's like minus 2 over 2. That'll be minus 3 halves. Y coordinate, negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Minus 4, negative 10. All right, next point. Oh, there's that fraction again. Okay, so 1 half minus 2 over 2, that's negative 1 half. 2 times 3 is 6, minus 4, that's going to be a 2. Negative 1 minus 1, that's a 0. 1 times 3 is 3, minus 4, that's negative 1. And 2 minus 1 is 1. And then, oh, here's those fractions again. So 1 half, oh, that'd be the same as over here, except 1 half times 3, that'll be a positive 3 halves, minus those 8 halves, that would be a negative 5 halves. And so there's this location of my six points, so I could go plot them. So 1, 2, 3, down 11 halves, just count your halves. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Make your point. Next we're at negative 2, 7. There's negative 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Make that point. Negative 3 halves. So we're right there. Right there, negative 3 halves. we got to go down 10. Holy cow. 
Well, let's see, this is 7, so 8, 9, 10, right there. And then draw your graph. On the positive side, negative 1 half, 2, that's going to be, oh, negative 1 half, I apologize, I went to positive 1 half. Let me get a little, there we go. Negative 1 half, 2, 0, negative 1, and 1 and 5 halves. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right there. Whoops, I goofed again, didn't I? I was going to say, that curve looks kind of weird. It's 0 and negative 1. I plotted 0 and a positive 1. I need to be right there. There we go. That looks better. And there's my graph. Just don't go so fast that you goof up your numbers. And again, if we go back and you check those points right here, okay, there's negative 3. And you count down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. They're there. So that's another way you can graph your transformation is just by showing the changes to all your coordinates. All right. Okay, next example. Now we're going to break out the calculator. All right, got to find my calculator here. There it is. All right, use a calculator, similar te technology to investigate the behavior of the expression 6x plus 5 over 2x minus 3. All right, so we're going to y equals. Clear that out. Alpha y equals. We need 6x plus 5 and 2x minus 3. So I'm going to graph this as a zoom 6 window. Okay, now let's see. What are they asking me to do here? All right. As x goes to positive infinity and negative infinity, where are we approaching? Well, I really don't see enough of what's happening here. I don't see anything. It looks like it's starting to flatten out. So what I'm going to do is hit my window, change my min to a negative 100, and then to a positive 100. Regraph it. Okay, there's the flattening out. It looks like it's at 1, 2, 3. So I think it's at 3, so I'm going to go to y sub 2, put in a 3, regraph it, and sure enough, there's my graph. All right, so let me get caught up on my clicks here. So there I entered into Y1. There was my first graph, the zoom 6, where I changed the min and max to 100. And I said, yep, there's my horizontal asymptote. As X goes to positive infinity and negative infinity, my F of X is definitely heading out to positive 3 in either case. Does this appear to have any value that would be a vertical asymptote in this function? Yep, we can see something happening right, wait a minute, that's not quite, no, we're on top of the y-axis. All right, wait a minute, let me bring my calculator back. Let me hit the trace button. Okay, there's trace, and I'm at zero, but I have a number, so zero is not my vertical asymptote. All right, so there is something, oh, wait a minute, I'm jumping back and forth already. Okay, so how do I find that y, that vertical asymptote? Set your denominator equal to 0. Add over the 3, divide by 2, 1.5. So now in the trace mode, I type in 1.5. You'll see that there's no value for y. We're not touching the graph. Therefore, that's your vertical asymptote. 